Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let me welcome you all to the afternoon session of this 21-day uh, program. We have with us Dr. Babu, uh, Bobby Glacier. Sir is principal scientist, ICAR Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, Kochi. Uh, and the topic chosen for deliberation is Mary uh, Culture Technologies for Enhancing Livelihood Options in Coastal Sector. Uh, sir, you're audible as well as visible. Also, the session has been uh, rec started recording and uh, your presentation is also visible. Please start, sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon to all. Uh, today's uh, topic is... Can you speak a bit louder and closer to the mic? Yeah, yeah uh, today's uh, topic is on mariculture technologies, which is uh, uh, suitable for uh, enhancing the livelihood options. Okay, from the coastal section for the fishermen of the coastal seas. So you know the medical Probably it's a it's a developed sector, and in India we are just starting. A lot of hope in the. Hello, sir. Can you uh, push the microphone in or uh, take the headphone out? Why? Because we are not able to hear you properly. Is everyone able to hear, uh, sir, properly? No, sir. Yes, sir. It is audible. No. 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 no, is it audible? Yes, yes, perfect. Can you raise the volume? Yeah? The mariculture is the farming of marine plants and animals in the marine environment. So it's a it's a developed sector in world over. A lot of countries are doing it, but in our our country it is in a, still in an infant stage, and we are uh, yet to come as a global leader in this sector. And we have so many technologies available for the development of mariculture in our country, mainly to produce kingfisher, crustaceans, mollusks like oysters. The importance of mariculture is that when the, our uh, farming, or my, our production from the sea, from our uh, from capture fishery, it's coming. It's almost stagnant. It's, there is no further increase in the uh, amount of fishes caught from the sea. So the only option to increase our uh, production from the marine sector is to go for farming of marine organisms. That is the importance of mariculture in, in the present scenario. And you know there is a uh, plenty of scope for increasing the uh, production from the sea from through mariculture in our country. Lot of potential areas are there. Lot of potential species are available, and lot of potential technologies are available. So we there is a projected production potential of around four to eight million tons from our coastal waters. And uh, uh, and currently we are not at all utilizing this. Uh, potential or this particular resource or this uh, particular sector and our production is less than 0.1 million tons currently only for few species and food technologies we are utilizing the marine environment otherwise uh, the sector is a, a, a very uh, um, underutilized sector and these are the major technologies uh, i think i am audible now no yes sir yes sir you are audible okay okay so these are our technologies currently available for mariculture protection in our country. We oh. have technologies for shellfish culture, we have technologies for pinfish culture, seaweed culture, integrated multitrophic agriculture systems, recirculation agriculture systems, hatcheries for uh, seed production, nurseries for uh, 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 growing the seeds from hatcheries. So I will take one by one. The, the first technology is for bivalve farming. You know, bivalve farming is the molluscan culture where we culture uh, mussels or oysters. It is a low trophic uh, uh, food chain animal, but the, the, the food is only microalgae, and we don't know not to give any additional feed to this particular organism when you grow it in our waters. So the technologies are available for farming of this species, these bivalves. Um, the technology is mainly based on raft method. They are suitable for bays and inshore waters. And the rack method for the uh, brackish water estuaries, or long line method for open seas. So, with these three types of uh, uh, farming system, we can um, 
form bivalves in our water and mainly mussels are being by, um, formed like perna indica and perna brown and green mussels and the edible oysters and this is a photograph of the uh, rack and uh, uh, and the, here you can see this is a rack culture method and this is a raft, raft culture where the, uh, the, the raft is floated on the surface of the water the other one is a fixed one the middle you can see a, a string of uh, grown mussels ready to harvest so these grass mussels are harvested and sold to the uh, entrepreneur, I mean, uh, to the customers. And this is a, a, a low cost uh, technology. Uh, uh, the farmers in the coastal areas and estuaries and back shot areas where saline water is available, they can take up this technology, low cost technology. There is only the only expenses to uh, to fabricate this kind of rafts or rack and the seed cost. There is no expenditure for feed because feed is from the natural water. And after four, five, five to six months, they can harvest the crop. And this is a long line method of mussel farming. Other one was raft and method. The other, other, other thing is around regarding edible oyster. The same by one, this is edible oyster. Again, the technology is available and almost similar technology that of mussels. Uh, uh, um, you can have a raft method, rack method, or even long, uh, long line is not there, rack, rack and raft. And the, the meat is being consumed. And, uh, uh, you can sell it to the hotels or customers for uh, And these two technologies are uh, well, uh, well adopted by the farmers in West Coast, in uh, Kerala, Karnataka, and the Govan area, because it's all a uh, preferred species in uh, that area. So the farmers from that, that belt, West Coast, are doing it in a large scale and a commercial scale. And the production is something around 20, uh, 10 to 20,000 tons per year. And uh, another technology for um, agriculture is uh, marine pearl culture technology. Uh, CMFRA is a pioneer in the developing this particular technology. And uh, we have uh, um, technologies for producing uh, uh, Indian pearl oyster, the white color or yellow colored Indian pearl oyster from the oyster called Pinkata, Pukata, and the black colored oyster um, pearls from Pinkata Margaritifera. It is being done at Andaman. So these two technologies are available in our country and uh, these are uh, potential uh, uh, ventures for, for farmers to uh, look into for uh, uh, increasing their income and profitability. And this is the uh, farming method. We have uh, a, a rough culture method or rack culture can be adopted for uh, rearing pearl oysters. You can see in the figure the, the pearl oysters are kept in these kind of boxes and reared in rough for uh, uh, one, one year. And uh, after one year, they are harvested. The the juveniles are reared in these boxes, and when they are grown enough to implant the nucleus, they are uh, harvested. I mean, implanted with the nucleus, then reared for another uh, um, uh, three to twelve months, and they're ready. Uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, no pearls produced within the animal is being harvested. You can see this is the. Photograph. This is the oysters, pearl oysters, uh, animal, bivalve animal. In that, here you can see the, the cursor is moving. You can see the pearls are kept here. Because this is a grown up or fully formed pearl inside the body of the oyster. We open up the oyster shell and take out these pearls. You can see the here, this is this is the way we are inserting the pearl into the body of the oyster. So this is a plastic, I mean, a artificial bead and inserted into the body of the oyster inside this animal and kept it in this rack in the ocean for uh, uh, three to uh, some around 10 to 12 months. And after uh, 10 to 12 months, the pearl is formed like this. And from there, you can harvest it and sell it. So one gram of pearl, the, the natural, uh, uh, this kind of pearls produced from marine oysters, one gram costs you something around 1,000 to 1,500 rupees per gram. So one pearl is around 300 milligram or uh, 400 milligram. So three pearls. Uh, gives you uh, thousand five hundred rupees. So this is uh, another technology, very lucrative technology. Here, the the main uh, uh, constraint is the implantation, this insertion of this artificial bead into the body of the oyster. It needs some skill and some uh, technology. So that 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 should be done by a expert implanter. Otherwise, uh, there is no need for any further uh, uh, feeding or anything because it is it it takes its feed from the in the from the water itself so they normally grows like that without any uh, um, artificial feeding it's natural feeding only
and again from the pearl oyster what you have seen is the production of uh, round pearls but uh, where he can we can have the mabe pearls also mabe pearls is another kind of pearl where whether the it is somewhat uh, compared to the uh, round or spherical pearls this is a uh, little easy here uh, that uh, insertion technology is little easy where we are not inserting anything into the body of the animal only the only the images you can see the images i'll show it the next slide you can see the images these kind of images are kept inside the uh, i mean not into the body in the on the shell of the oysters kept attached on the shell of the oysters and from the shells we can uh, after some 3 4 months if the shell this this kind of images got coated with a pearly nacre uh, with a different color and these nacres uh, and this can be cut out uh, can be removed from the uh, from the um, uh, oyster and uh, this kind of uh, um, necklaces or uh, uh, ornaments can be made for uh, um, um but is that this they are from for uh, um hanging from the mala or, or something like that so this is the uh and uh, uh, this is the um uh, mabe pearl this is some other easy technology than um uh, your uh, um, spherical pearl production but uh, it can be utilized by the farmers and another uh, big uh, thing is the uh, production of uh, seaweed seaweed culture now seaweed culture is gaining importance in our country and lot of uh, things are being uh, happening and in india we have started culture of seaweeds in 1972 onwards we have we seem of developing technology uh, but most of the seaweed for seaweed industry are uh, today also it is from wild collection the harvesting of the uh, uh, farm the seaweed is there but mostly the other varieties like grassleria gelidella sargassum all that thing are wild collection only so only seaweed cultured now now where is in india is kappa pygus that is mainly for production of karajine the other species other species of seaweeds are mainly for agar production or algin production so kappa pygus is uh, one of now the uh, gaining important popularity among farmers because it's a high growth rate and high production capacity and high demand is there and uh, now in uh, mainly in tamil nadu near rameshwaram and that belt uh, now people so farmers are doing it in a, Large scale for the production of uh, uh, I mean, kappa pygus uh, alvarezi. That is the seaweed culture. There. You can see the you can see the seaweed rafts there. It is a simple construction, a bamboo uh, bamboo poles attached to the fire, and in that you can uh, they will keep the seaweed seaweed small small pieces in a uh, inserted into a rope string and they tied like this, and the 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 raft is floated on the surface of the water almost a, a, a five, five to ten centimeters below the water so that the light will be there and the seaweed, seaweed will grow and these are the uh, you can see seaweed uh, rafts uh, used for production of uh, seaweed two methods are there vegetative propagation using fragment and uh, the other one is to use spores but normally we are using the common method is vegetative propagation using the fragments of the grown up plants uh, uh, not all pieces Used for uh, producing the, uh, and this is the uh, kappa pygus uh, alvarez. The kappa pygus farming at Mandalay. You can see the one one string removed from the raft. This kind of ten uh, or twenty strings are uh, kept in a one raft. You have seen there earlier. Now this is the one string. A one string is like this. Okay, the, the, the this is the uh, seaweed. Uh, you can see it. and this is a uh, economics of uh, seaweed uh, culture raising a raft of 12 into 12 feet a total cost because total cost of production is 3000 rupees per raft per year you can have three crops from a raft per year the raft you have seen a uh, 12 into 12 feet from there you, four times you can harvest the crop every every, every time you can we will get 250 kg of seaweeds and like that four times if you harvest you will get 1000 kg of uh, seaweed in a year The price of seaweed is around something around six rupees, six rupees or six point five rupees uh, wet to it. I mean, not dried seaweed, uh, wet seaweed. 
so uh, you, you can from a thousand kg of uh, seaweed a per year you can have a generate a revenue of 6500 rupees per year and uh, minusing the expenditure 3000 you will get 3500 per raft per year that is uh, from a single raft of 6 into uh, to 12 into 12 so what we they are telling is you can one person can handle 45 numbers of raft uh, individually so if you have 3500 into 45 that is the income for a farmer for doing a seaweed culture around 1.5 lakh rupees he can earn from the seaweed culture with this raft culture method and another important or interesting uh, sector is uh, marine ornamental fish culture there the, it is called a low oleum high value enterprise where the oleum is very low but the, uh, the money involved the revenue involved is very high because each fish will the fishes are very small like uh, three centimeter or two inch three inch size fishes but each fish will give you a price of two, uh, 100 rupees or 200 rupees like that so if you are able to produce a thousand uh, ornamental fish and able to sell it to a pin and per month a uh, thousand numbers so 100 rupees into thousand that comes around 10,000 rupees easily so that, that's called a low volume high high value enterprise and CMFR I have technology for uh, production of this uh, ornamental fishes they, we have have technology for 23 species of ornamental fish including clown fishes damsels dirty bags the a set of clown fishes we are developing including and these are the names of damsel fishes for, for which we are uh, developed uh, technology. And uh, this is a photograph of some of the uh, beautiful uh, ornamental fishes. We know the marine ornamental fishes are very beautiful, highly colored, not like our freshwater fishes and uh, very costly also. These are uh, damsels and clown fishes. I told you something around 100 to 200 rupees per piece you will get. But there are fishes which could fetch around 1,000, 2,000 or 3,000 rupees or even 5,000 rupees per piece. So the kind of high value fishes are not there. But these fishes we, we definitely will get uh, a wholesale price of 100 rupees per piece. And we can, uh, this uh, there, there is a, in the hatchery or in the uh, production sector, the survival is very high. We can, um, um, minimum you will get a 50% survival. In our hatchery system so uh, if from a clownfish uh, clownfish uh, pair uh, clownfish uh, will lay uh, around uh, 300 to 600 eggs per uh, spawning so if you if you get a 500 eggs from that definitely we can uh, we will get around 200 uh, juveniles after one month of rearing so 200 or even 100 numbers if you are getting one from one pair of clownfishes you will get 10,000 rupees by selling it in the market so that is the advantage of our attraction of this particular technology, marine ornamental fish breeding. Uh, and it requires only very small space, a small aquarium is sufficient for one pair. Like that, if you are giving 10 pairs, means 10 aquarium is sufficient. That can be accommodated in a small shed with some uh, uh, life feed like rotifers and artemi and some uh, other, uh, uh, other uh, feeds for the juvenile fishes. Uh, this is one. This is the uniqueness of the high survivability is there, disease resistance is there, fecundity is also good. And uh, with this, these are the advantage of this particular technology in ornamental fish country. And with, with using our CMFRA technology in Tamil Nadu, uh, Ramnaduram, fisherwoman, that is, uh, that is uh, um, fisherwoman of a fisherman, the wives of fisherman, they used to take, they used to uh, take up this technology with this small, uh, rings uh, you can see the concrete rings here they are using this concrete rings are as uh, their tanks and they rear the uh, uh, clownfish larvae in this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, cement tanks and and they are selling it for one one rupee well, uh, one inch or 1.5 inch juvenile for 75 and 100 rupees per fish to the fish trader so this is that a, a successful model they have developed in uh, tamil nadu using our technology in the, this is in in uh, uh, back of a backyard program, not in as a big hatchery or commercial hatchery, no, not like that. It is a small backyard program with a small shed and, and behind their house, their own house with these kind of white and uh, concrete rings they erect and they do the farming and they're selling to the farmers. They have their regular uh, traders there, they will come and collect the uh, seeds from there. And uh, I told you roughly, uh, they can they can around 10 to 15,000 rupees per month with this uh, small technology.
So this is our um, uh, economic benefit you can see. Average around one to two lakhs per annum. We are getting uh, 10,000 rupees per month. Easily you can have one or 1.2 lakhs per annum. And this is another technology. This is a little, uh, uh, little uh, um, technique oriented. It's a uh, actually production of marine fin fishes, food fishes, uh, big fishes like uh, um, sea bass or cobia or pampano or grouper. This kind of uh, big big size fishes. We have same uh, area have technologies for breeding and the laboring of all these fishes. Fishes and uh, uh, we are transferring this technology. Uh, some of our uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, private entrepreneurs are taking up in Andhra, in Karnataka, in Kerala. These uh, hatchery technologies are being uh, taken up and uh, they are uh, um, using it. These are the different species. We have uh, developed technology for farming for hatchery, silver pombano, Indian pombano, orange sporter grouper, and pink hair green. So it, it is little uh, uh, labor intensive, capital intensive and expensive also but uh, there is a heavy demand for seeds in our country and once the agriculture or farming of these fishes are getting popularized in the near future definitely there will be a, a more much more demand so uh, um, uh, uh, connected to this uh, we can think of starting a I mean, operating in nurseries also, not as a big, fully, uh, fully functional uh, uh, hatchery with the root stock, live feed, laboratory system, and all that thing. But the entrepreneurs or farmers can think of developing nurseries for this species because they can collect the um, uh, weaned or uh, fingerling sized or uh, small one inch sized uh, fishes from uh, hatcheries and rear it in their nursery. A ponds or nursery tanks in, in, in their places and they grow it in a bigger size of uh, uh, three inch or five inch where the farmers prefer that size for stoking in their ponds or cages. So there can be a nursery rearing uh, group can be formed. The, the juveniles can be collected from hatcheries and ride in their nursery for a two or three months maximum and sell it to the farmers. That is also a very highly a lucrative uh, enterprise uh, people can think of and uh, this model is being worked in Andhra Pradesh in some place whether they are collecting seabar seeds from the hatchery small seabar seeds one in size and rear it in their ponds and selling it back to the farmers within two three months Maybe, uh, the the one in size uh, the seed will cost you something around five to six to ten rupees and then you are selling it after two months for 60 or 50 rupees so that means margin you will get uh, where is the uh, nursery rearing sector and this is recirculated agricultural system where uh, if there is no need for water exchange there is no need for a uh, cage system it is a fully automated uh, rearing system with a big tanks where you can rear the fishes year round with a water labor intensive and capital intensive not for the uh, uh, low cost farming uh, sector it, it is a uh, it is it, it's not so popular in our places also it is popular in other other countries but we have our in our 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 laboratory we have uh, ri systems in our most of in most of our uh, uh, centers we install this kind of this is an important one uh, uh, installed like mandapa it is a 60 ton tank with all the gadgets there of all the circulation filtration and everything so in vishakhapatnam in garwar in kochi everywhere we are also uh, started our own model of uh, recirculatory system for farming the fishes. And another uh, 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 technology is the farming of uh, pombano in ponds, coastal ponds. Pombano or groupers, I uh, uh, can, uh, you can, you can um, farm it in uh, uh, in cages. In the ponds also, you can do it. Uh, this is the um, practices for farming uh, uh, pombano, Indian pombano in ponds. So you should stock a bigger size to fishes of 30 grams. To get a maximum survival, and you should fertilize it every fortnight for uh, getting a medium water quality and water color, and to create a feeding zone for reducing the feed cost or wastage of feed. And water change 25 percent water every month, and the uh, is uh, for uh, each pond you have to give, and uh, the stocking density is 5,000 numbers per acre, uh, at, and the harvested size is around 
twenty fifty grams per fish. So this is the uh, farming farming method for farming. You know, Punjab Bambana in our uh, coastal ponds. So this is the product of uh, farming of Bambana in ponds. In uh, this is from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, and finally regarding the cage culture, the marine. Uh, uh, fish cage culture. Uh, you can uh, 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 a variety of species can be reared in this floating six meter diameter open sea cage culture. You can see the palm cobia, silver bambano, Indian bambano grouper, all the fishes. And same for has developed the technology for uh, the fabrication of cages, mooring of the cages, and the farming protocols also. So for uh, starting the cage culture, you should be careful about the site selection. You should select. Water current, optimum depth, of water, dissolved oxygen, salinity, and everything before starting your uh, uh, farming in cage culture. The site selection is very important for getting a, a maximum profit and uh, returns. And for uh, see from Zima forest side, we have uh, um, uh, conducting uh, uh, I mean various programs. Uh, this is regarding a Gujarat model where we have identified suitable sites for cage farming in the sea. You can see the green colored ones are our blue colored colored areas are classified as more suitable and green are suitable like that. We classified the entire Gujarat coast uh, uh, like this for uh, whether so that the farmers or entrepreneurs who are interested to do cage farming can see this map and start their program at the most suitable or suitable sites rather than looking, uh, wandering here and there and asking for the suggestions. So this kind of uh, mapping or identification of sites, we are doing it for entire Indian coast so that the uh, interested farmers can uh, start uh, farming right away uh, without uh, wasting the energy and time. And uh, this selection is mainly based on uh, um, uh, but it's that mainly based on various criteria uh, developed for uh, site selection, and based on that we we we, we developed a, a, a program, and for, based on that we selected this. One. And uh, after site selection, these are the construction of cages and cage components. You know there is a collar uh, supporting system. We can be made with. Uh, you can see the figure. That is a cage collar. In that we tie our net, and in the in that net we wire the fishes. This well, this collar can be made with the PVC material, HTP material, or whatever the uh, material. It should be strong and it should be withstand the forces of uh, wind and current. That is only the only criteria. These you can see these are the two types of frames, cage frames. This is uh, HTP grade frame, and this is the uh, uh, GA frame with the GA pipes, flow with the floating barrels. Here we don't require any barrels because GA pipes float itself. Pipes float itself. There is a flotation capacity, but there is no flotation capacity. Before we have to add additional barrels for flotation. The design you can see this is the frame, and uh, through under that frame we tie two bags of net. One is out of bag, net net bag, and the other inside there is inner net, net bag. So in, inside the inner net bag we keep the fishes for. And uh, this is the net bag. We, I told you know we have inner ground net, outer, outer protector protection net. The outer one is give protection to the inner net. And inside the inner net we raise the fishes. And there is a broad bird protection net so that the the birds will not enter into the cage and uh, and uh, uh, take out the fishes. Uh, we are using the uh, synthetic nylon polythene netting for uh, nets. And this is the uh, frame uh, cage frame connected with. Uh, uh, the nets and uh, uh, the green one. This green one is the product protector, outer predator protection net, and the blue one is the inner net. Inside that, the fishes are being right. And the yellow one is the cage frame. And this is the way we keep the uh, keep the cages in the sea. This is a cage, and from there we have chains and anchors, floats and everything. And finally, it is anchored to the bottom sea bottom with the anchors or. Uh, with uh, boulders or uh, concrete blocks, whatever the base, depending upon the uh, condition of the sea bottom. If sea bottom is clay, we can go for uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, cement blocks, angles, and everything. If somebody, if uh, it is fully sandy, we have to think of another um, better holding uh, uh, anchorage system. 
for uh, we have to select the C bottom before uh, uh, installing the cages because if the C bottom is not perfect and it is not uh, having enough holding capacity, sometimes after some time uh, uh, when the current comes, the cage will move away from its side. So to, uh, to avoid that one, the cage bottom, the C bottom should be uh, checked for its uh, capacity for uh, uh, holding the angles. And if it is okay, we can think, we can we can move the cage like this, cage and the chains and uh, and the angle and normally what what is there is a uh, what is that is if the if you the, the depth of the site where we are going to install the gauges is 10 meter the length of the chain is minimum 40 meter uh, so uh, uh, yeah, four times the depth of the um, depth of the water column is used for mooring it and this is called a single point mooring system where we are keeping the cage or uh, attaching the cage to only one point. This is only a single point. It is connected to a single point. So this is called a single point. The advantage is that whenever the current or wind comes, the, the cage moves. Uh, it moves and goes to the other side. So that the wind effect and the cage, current effect will be minimum on the cages. So cage move away from the current or away from the sea wind. But we have different other types of moorings like fixed type mooring uh, called uh, grid mooring, where uh, the cage is fixed in a particular location. That kind of moorings are also available. But but CMFR is mainly on single point mooring system. And this is again the same six meter diagonal uh, uh, HTP cages floated in the water. This is a uh, H has GA cages floated in the cages. This is Carvar or Scarvar Carvar sender cage form. And this has a different cage cages developed by CMFRI, big cages of 50 meters diameter and finally six meter cage. Uh, we now we are concentrating major on six meter diameter cages. So we found that it is more suitable for handling. And, uh, and the management is also easy. So our uh, present uh, focus is on six meters. And this is the uh, post cages uh, developed. Uh, and these are the species that can be cultured in our uh, uh, cages in our uh, our waters, like cobia, seva, slope, or mullet. And this is some of the demonstration uh, uh, details we have done uh, about sebas. Uh, we the shrubbing density is around 35 numbers per meter cube. Culture period is six to uh, again you can extend up to 12 months, and the harvest size is 1.5. Kg, uh, you can uh, with the 35 kg, uh, kg per meter cube. That is the production from the, in this cage we are expecting. Uh, something around uh, three to five tons of fishes can be harvested from this cage, six meter. These are the uh, fishes harvested, uh, and harvested from the cages. And the cobia, cobia again, as a good fish, it grows very fast. In six months, it can grow up to three kgs if the feeding and everything is correct. And uh, and if you grow for a one year, the fish will grow to around uh, six to seven kg uh, uh, size. And uh, the since it grows to a bigger size, the density of stocking stocking density is less. It's only ten numbers per meter cube. And uh, the harvesting size is around three to three kg in six months. And if it grows to one year, it's around seven kg. And and we can harvest around five to six kgs of fishes from that time. This is the Cobia cages and harvested cobia from the cages. And sappers also, we, we used to culture. This is the uh, Sargent Immaculatus, the, the mango red sapper. And again, it's a highly prized and uh, most popular fish. Uh, growth rate is so very good. And uh, most, so many people are doing it. Only the problem is that the, the first two ones, what I said, the sea bars and cobia, the seeds are available from the hatchery. The seeds are not available, it is from the widely collected seeds. In the same case with the mullet, here also seeds are not available, hatchery production seeds are not there. Only in the season we can collect it from the white and the This is the harvest of the mullet from the cages. And the next species is Cleopsis. This one also now popular in uh, Gujarat and uh, uh, in Kanyamari also in uh, southern uh, Tamil Nadu also people are doing it, Tutukudin also. These people are collecting small sized jewelings of uh, uh, lobsters because lobsters under a particular size we cannot sell it. There is a restriction on selling small sized juvenile lobsters. So, this small sized juvenile is accidentally caught in the net. The, the farmers collect it from the fisherman and rear it in their uh, cages for four months. 
So it will grow to a size of 200 grams, 150 to 200 grams in four months and sell it uh, at a high price because it's very uh, highly priced product. We can, you will get something around 1,500 rupees per kg, this particular species. So I am, so the shocking density also less. Here yeah, they have to stock only 1,500 per kg, uh, less than that something. And you'll get around 300 kgs per, from a uh, lobster cage, but the price is very high. And uh, now the farmers in uh, Tutukorin area, uh, Gujarat area are uh, mainly doing this farming. Only problem is that there is no actually produced uh, juveniles are available uh, mainly from wild cut coat, uh, small sized lobsters. And in the long run, if you are aware of the lobster farming in a large scale, there will be a problem in uh, 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 seed harvesting or seed availability. But, and sustainability issues are also there. So we are not promoting it in a very big scale, but whatever the small sized uh, accidentally caught uh, lobsters are coming, they shall be used for farming. Not as in a very, very big scale. This is lobster farming in some of the And this is the cage culture, a small uh, a, 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 a nutshell. Cage culture of marine wind fishes cobia in six meter diameter cages. For eight to ten months, and the economic benefit is something around two to three lakhs per cages, depending upon the species grown. Uh, and because then we have calculated roughly uh, approximately around 170 kg, 170 rupees per kg production cost for producing one kg of fish in cages, and uh, and approximately we can get a uh, 350 rupees from uh, uh, per per kg of fish as uh, an wholesale market the produced fish. So uh, around 200 or uh, uh, 150 to 200 rupees per kg, that is the net profit we are calculated uh, by farming the fishes in kg, the economic benefits of cage culture. And this is uh, again, uh, um, apart from the round uh, cages for sea, open sea culture, we have also developed this, this kind of 4 into 4 meter GA cages for uh, estuaries and uh, uh, where the wave action and wind action is very less. This is mainly uh, back shorter uh, estuary in areas where the, mainly these are being operated by again the woman, fisher woman only. You can see one woman standing on there uh, and they kept near to their house in here um, wherever the uh, fisher woman where the, 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 where the houses are situated near the uh, saline water or open water where they, there they are keeping this kind of cages. If the cost of a single cage is something around 30,000 or uh, 40,000 rupees and uh, Plus seed also, some with with some uh, 60,000 or uh, around one lakh rupees, they can fabricate and start farming uh, uh, farming in this kind of cages, four into four meter. Mainly they are doing sea bass and the pombano, and they are harvesting around one to two tons of fishes from this kind of cages. And the very popular thing in uh, uh, Kerala, Karnataka area, even in Tamil Nadu also. And NFDB has supported in uh, erecting around 1,500 cages in. Uh, uh, in Kerala, Karnataka, and Maharashtra area, even go uh, that side also. So, uh, 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 so people have started doing it, and it's a it's a very big uh, thing because there is a lot of demand for fishes, and uh, uh, marketing is not at all a problem for them. These are the different uh, views of that kind of again in like short areas. However, uh, so water is available near to their house, uh, people start their own. There is no intervention, no support from CMFRA. They manufacture or they will fabricate with a local welder and GA pipe. Anybody can do it uh, with a 4 into 4 meter square. They can, they can weld it. Uh, welders can easily, easily they can do it. And the net also, the fishermen themselves, they can fabricate the nets and tie you to it. And with their own innovation, they will start uh, with uh, whatever the seeds are available. But they start farming. It's a very, very popular thing in this. And another um, method, we are integrating the CV and with uh, cage culture both uh, seaweeds and uh, um, farming. This is a mare fish farm, fish cage along with the seaweeds. So both are cultured together. So uh, both will get an benefit. The seaweed will uh, uh, absorb the uh, excess nutrients uh, produced by the cages from its uh, feeding and uh, waste of the fishes and the seaweed will get an extra growth of some around 70 to 80 percent extra growth and the seaweed will uh, um, reduce the pollution effect of the cages in the open water. So both way, it is uh, 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 it is uh, beneficial for the farmers. And this is called IMT, Integrated Sea Multitrophic Aquaculture. It is also being propagated in a large, large scale in Tamil Nadu, 
area nowadays. This is the uh, integrated multi-trophic seaweed. You can see the seaweed grow. 298 kg of seaweed in 45 days instead of one. Normally, it is 150 kg. This is a different uh, gain in seaweed. You will get additional uh, seaweed uh, production. Price also you will get extra. Additional margin also we can expect by doing this kind of integration. So these are the main uh, technologies available for uh, coastal fishermen and water folk for their livelihood uh, under mariculture uh, sector. So this kind of technology they can, these are all uh, farmer friendly technologies and not involving uh, much sophisticated uh, uh, technologies. Anybody can do it because a lot of farmers have uh, started doing it. They are doing it. So that's why I'm thinking this can be, uh, anybody can take up. There is no, uh, with a small interest and a small support, technical support from the institute like us or uh, uh, any uh, fisheries institute. Uh, anybody, anybody can uh, start uh, uh, thinking of uh, um, starting a medical activity at their own places. There is not, not that much uh, technology uh, uh, driven, like uh, uh, except for uh, marine pearl culture, there is some, some technologies involved. But other the fish farming, it's a, a thing uh, whether anybody, everybody can do it. Marine ornamental fish is definitely yeah, small, small units, uh, anybody can start and uh, earn money. And cage farming also definitely it is an easy one. And bivalve, bivalve also, you can see the fisher in Kerala, you can see a lot of fisher women, mainly fisher women are uh, doing this uh, muscle culture, uh, oyster culture and selling it. They are making money out of that. So these are the uh, technologies available. And uh, this is the last slide where you can see some of the problems uh, when you go for a uh, agriculture development in our country. There. Uh, a lot of uh, other uses are also there for our uh, water bodies, like fishermen, uh, traditional fishermen, navigation channels, and all that thing. So you should be very careful about the common property use and conflicts, and the carrying capacity. Each each water body is having a carrying capacity. Above that, the the, the environment will not uh, uh, tolerate it or sustain it. So we should be very careful. Don't do it uh, judiciously. You should uh, utilize our uh, natural resources and the water resources so that uh, the, the the carrying capacity cannot be uh, exceeded and our uh, uh, production should be with, well within the carrying capacity of that water body and uh, uh, and uh, again the pollution pollution also you have to careful and the conservation also have to done and uh, now to the to uh, uh, promote mariculture uh, the government is coming up with various policies and and regulations and everything and there is one policy what we are also uh, demanding for a long time is the leasing policy of water body because these pro these programs are uh, like sketch farming it is for a minimum of 10 months 8 to 10 months or one year it should be a continuous program so there is some mechanism so that the farmers can have some kind of leasing rights over the water body so they can continuously do farming for one or two two years by uh, giving a lease amount to the government the other ways uh, and that uh, so that then only they can think of uh, having a protection from the uh, outside theft or insurance or whatever the institutional support they can claim. That is only possible when they get uh, leasing rights on the water body. So the uh, government, uh, we hope that there will be some kind of movement happening in the government sector so that the, the leasing, some kind of leasing policy uh, will be evolved for the farmers to start uh, mariculture activities at their places. So that's from my side uh, regarding the medical technology. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Now, Thank if there are any questions, we're, uh, we're just having a few minutes for that minute. Only a few questions. Please ask. There's a question in chat, which part of seaweed will be more effective for micro-propagation and nutrient media for seaweed culture? So you're asking for tissue culture, say. Sorry, I don't know, but th this is one of the participants asking in the chat. Yeah, micro-propagation with the seaweed, we are just trying only, we are not doing it, but we are using the fragment culture. We are taking the fragments and doing it in a in a small piece from the grown up plants and uh, the same is being uh, cultured i mean grown up grown in a another another raft that is the way we are doing there is no tissue culture experiments are going on but we are not started it 
if you are it is regarding tissue culture otherwise it is vegetative propagation only no spore no, no spore are not used vegetative propagation of seaweeds are commonly used for copper fibers or erasleria or jelly bean or whatever it is it is a vegetative propagation here there is one more question uh, for pompano is it more productive in ponds for cage culture or grow out for grow out yeah it is uh, we found that it is uh, um, i have a good growth in uh, low saline ponds also uh, because uh, in open sea cage culture pompano's growth is little less but in uh, saline uh, coastal ponds the growth is uh, comparatively uh, or appreciably good a little uh, low saline like uh, uh, 20 to 25 ppt so i think uh, cage culture uh, rather than cage culture pompano pond culture also equally good thank you sir are there any further questions anyone to anyone wants to ask sir uh, thank you very much for being with us on behalf of the participants as well as on behalf of the uh, organizing committee thank you very much for being with us it's always a pleasure having you with us thank you sir Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Let's join back tomorrow. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, the videos are going to be uh, uploaded on YouTube itself. You can subscribe so that you get notifications. Thank you, thank you, sir. I request everyone to subscribe to the channel. Thank you. We may all leave now. Thank you.